Oh, I'm so glad that worked. Crusoe friends, welcome back to Opus L and I, where we solve problems. This was actually going to be a video about making an Elizabethan shirt, but necessity is the mother of messing up your filming schedule. You may know by now, because I haven't shut up about it, that I have a new camera. It's the new Canon R6 Mark II, and oh, is she a beast. Before I go any further, I want to take a second and acknowledge that I would absolutely not have been able to make this amazing upgrade without the help and support of my Quesson army. Even if you're not a Kofi member, even if there was no direct financial component, you still watched the videos, which helps with ad revenue. You still shared videos on social media and got other people to watch and enjoy them. You still liked and commented and interacted, all of which pushes my content out to a wider audience. So thank you, all of you, for everything you do to help me make this channel a success. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled squealing. This camera is amazing. Without getting too technical, until recently, digital cameras went one of two directions. Either they were good at photography and only okay at video, or they were good at video and only okay at photography. This camera is great at both. The photos are so sharp and the resolution is so good and I can shoot in 4K full frame with no recording limit, which, if you're not super familiar with camera tech, is freaking amazing. I took it to my first SCA event a couple weekends ago and took over a thousand pictures. It really didn't feel like I took a thousand pictures until I got home and had to edit a thousand pictures. Well, I weeded out about three quarters of them and ended up with about 250 usable shots, which is a pretty decent return, honestly. But after taking that many pictures, I ran into a problem at the end of the day. So I like having a strap on my camera so I'm not holding it in my hand all day, especially now that this camera is about four times as heavy as my M50. But I don't like wearing the strap around my neck because I'm also usually doing things at events and I don't wanna smack my camera lens against whatever I'm working on because it's in front of me. And I also don't wanna risk bending over and having it swing out and smack against the table or something. So instead, I tend to wear it crossbody with my camera on my left hip, which keeps it handy but safe. After swinging my camera from hip to face for about a thousand pictures, I got home to find that I had, I had basically given myself a rug burn from the strap sliding against my neck all day, which sucked so much for about four days after that. So I went looking for alternative camera strap designs and I found one I liked and instead of just buying it, decided to create my own. So everyone grab your cuppa. Today I am drinking Iro from Tabletop Teas. It is a lovely premium green tea blend with jasmine and just a hint of rose. It perfectly evokes the avatar character it's named for. And the Tabletop Tea Shop is reopening today after a brief hiatus. So if you'd like to grab some for yourself, the link will definitely be in the description as always. Let's get into it. Not only does this project serve a practical purpose, it also gives me an excuse to try out my new ankle loom. I love my miniature one, which really does weave a respectable length of trim for its size. You may remember it from when I wove the trim from my Viking coat, but I wanted something a little sturdier that would weave a longer length and would be easier to card weave on. This loom is from Edgel's Woodstuffs. It's walnut and maple and delightful to work with, and I got a matching walnut shuttle to go with it. Since I haven't used it before, my first step is to make heddles. I figured out my weaving pattern before starting to film and I know I will need 25 heddles for this piece. I'll tie them in groups of five to keep track and when I'm finished, I'll save them for my next weaving project. Once my heddles are all cut and tied, it's time to warp up the loom. Don't mind as I warp the first thread incorrectly, I think I end up doing this every time I start a new weaving project. For some reason, the fact that heddled threads go over the first peg but loose threads skip it never seems to stick in my head. I've gotten to the point in my weaving that I usually end up working with silk, both because it's one step closer to authenticity and because it looks and feels so lovely. But this strap is probably going to take a beating and I don't wanna work with something I'd feel overly precious about or be concerned to wash. So this project is just regular old DMC cotton pearl, the kind that comes in skeins in the embroidery section of big box craft stores. I will say that I wish I hadn't tried to work with a thread directly out of the skein and put them on bobbins or wound them into a ball first. I always think I'm saving time by skipping that step and I'm always wrong.
The warping pattern I used was generated at the Carolingian realm. I just played around with various configurations until I hit on one I liked. I happen to have just enough cotton thread in the perfect colors to go with my period and mundane clothes, but they're all fairly low contrast with each other, so I had to mess with things to get the pattern that I liked. Houston, we have an annoyance. This loom slides all over the place when I beat the shed, and if I continue bracing it against my stomach, I'm going to have a bruise. Luckily, I found a temporary solution. I plan to get a dedicated clamp that doesn't stick out as much as this one does for weaving, since the loom is too big to be super portable anyway. Next, I'm going to weave forever. Luckily, I have completely unsponsored audiobooks to listen to. This one is The Galaxy in the Ground Within by Becky Chambers. It's the fourth book in her Wayfarer series of cozy sci-fi, and it is so very good. Because this loom is bigger and the pegs aren't polished to a super smooth finish, advancing the warp is a pain. I eventually figured out the most efficient way to pull the slack around the pegs, but the first couple of times were difficult. When the strap is almost done, I cut away the sides of the warp in order to weave the thinner middle bit to make the just-in-case safety strap. I actually probably should have started it sooner, I wove right up until I couldn't anymore and the strap is only just long enough. Time to measure on my body how long I want the strap to be and where I want my camera to hang on my hip, plus a little bit extra just in case. Strap construction starts with sewing a line of non-fray stitching on both ends of the straps and then trimming them down. After that, I can start adding hardware. The safety strap will get a durable steel ring on one end and a lobster claw hook and metal crimp that I totally cannibalized from a wrist strap on the other end for extra stability.
The strap itself gets three pieces of hardware, a heavy duty overlapping snap hook, a rectangular ring, and a slide buckle. One end of the strap will be sewn to the rectangle and I'll fold that end over double and sew a square and X for maximum security. Then the snap hook goes onto the strap, and this is the part that will slide freely up and down. The other end will get threaded through the slide buckle, looped through the rectangle, and then passed through the slide buckle again on the inside. I'll secure that end in the same way as the first, and then I will have an adjustable camera strap. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members, especially my newest members, Christina and Bullfreak Knot. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to see me make a removable shoulder pad for the strap. I was going to use cotton batting for the shoulder pad, but I forgot that I'd run out. So instead I'm using a spare piece of wool melt and doubled. The wool will be covered with leftover linen from my Demi Viking hood, which matches the orchid thread color perfectly. I'm just sewing these directly together since the edges will be bound after. I took light gray twill tape and sewed Velcro to the ends in order to make the pad removable. I may end up replacing the Velcro with snaps eventually since the Velcro doesn't feel very secure. The edges of the pad were bound with darker gray twill tape in two steps for maximum precision with the velcroed steps being added toward the end. 
and then it's done. Thank you for coming along with me while I do that thing where instead of buying an item for $50, I make it for definitely more than $100 of materials and tools and seven hours of my time. I am glad that I deliberately went with a design that I can wear to events and also in my everyday life since I want to be more intentionally taking pictures outside of things for the channel or at events. Quick reminder that my next video is going to fall on the week that I'm at Gulf War, so I will not be releasing a fully produced video like this. I'm going to try to do a live stream tent and camp tour for more, but I can't guarantee that the connectivity will be enough to do that. I will schedule the live stream just in case, so check back in on the channel next week to put that on your calendar. If you enjoyed this video, do please like and subscribe, click the bell if notifications are your jam, and consider sharing this or any of my videos on your favorite social media platform. If you're interested in finding me on said social media platforms, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, and those links will all be in the description box. I'll also post the link to my Ko-fi where you can leave a one-time tip, browse my web shop, or join my membership tiers for additional content and a personal thank you of your very own in my next video. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Hoyle!